Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I am here with the Load 75. It's made in Germany by Riesen Mueller. It's a Bosch powered cargo e-bike with dual batteries, lots of really cool features, super fun to ride as you'll see in the uh, ride test video. It features R&M's control technology to give you a very safe and very comfortable ride. Now this is the Load 75. You can actually fit three kids in here, a lot of stuff. We got uh, seating for two there and a third child here is optional with a foot well which is really cool when you get that third uh, uh, child seat there. Optional luggage trays so you can fit lots of stuff in there. They've got covers for it, lots of different accessories so you can put lots of stuff in there. The neat thing about the Load 75 is it has 50% more capacity than the Load 60 but it's actually not that much bigger than the Load 60. I mentioned it features Reason Mueller's control technology. What that means is that there's independent suspension on the front and rear wheels. So on the rear wheel here you can see we have a uh, independent swing arm and a uh, shock, a uh, coil shock, and on the front uh, something you'd be familiar with is obviously a suspension fork uh, up the front there. And what that does for you is it basically keeps you glued to the ground. Both wheels, front and rear, are always on the ground. That is important for cargo bike. It isolates you and the cargo from all the bumps in the road, rough pavement, potholes, things like that. It dramatically improves the handling. This is incredible. You really have to come try it. You'll see it in the video review. But if you come try this and then a cargo bike with a rigid uh, frame, you'll notice a huge difference in terms of how it handles. And that's really important on a cargo bike. You want to feel safe and confident. And that control technology really does that. It makes it feel incredibly safe. It helps you to feel really confident in riding a bike like this. It also means you're going to be more predictable in traffic. So you're not, you know, swerving to avoid uh, potholes or uh, uneven pavement, slowing down, speeding up. You're predictable, you're going straight, you're maintaining the speed because really none of those obstacles matter when you've got a bike like this. This is actually one of my favorite bikes to ride. Even if I don't have need for cargo, you'll often see me riding this bike around with no kids, no cargo, nothing in there, just because it's a fun bike to ride, really enjoyable. That low center of gravity really makes it a joy to ride. So in this video review, I'm going to talk a little bit why you'd want a cargo bike. I'm going to go into the details of the bike. I'll compare the uh, Load Touring to the Load Vario, talk about some of those differences, and I'll take you on a ride test. Now this is a very long video, so do feel free to skip around. Uh, I'll try to indicate the times as to when the uh, ride test is. You can always skip to that as well. And of course, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. I've spent a lot of time riding the uh, Load and, uh, well, all of the bikes that we sell. I spent a lot of time riding them, really getting to know them. So I'm more than happy to answer your questions. You can find our contact information on our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll also find the current pricing. You can order online if you wish. You'll find the detailed specs and uh, you'll find all sorts of uh, useful information and video reviews on other bikes as well. And I do these video reviews not because I'm getting paid for them. I'm not actually. I do these uh, because I want you to be able to choose the perfect e-bike. And sometimes that means uh, spending the time doing the reviews, getting to know the bike, and sharing that information with you. So that's what I do. The opinions are my own. I'll tell you the things I like, the things that I don't like, and uh, you know, just be completely uh, for right with you on that because I'm not getting paid for the videos. Obviously I do get paid when you buy a bike, that's how I make a living selling e-bikes, but uh, it's important to me to find the perfect e-bike for your needs. Okay, so before I get into the details of the bike, let's talk about why you'd want a cargo bike. And Obviously a cargo bike is a great car replacement. You know, when I'm riding my bike, it's just everything's better. You know, it's better for the environment, there's less emissions, less congestion, better for my health, I'm getting exercise, I'm getting outside. Studies are showing that being outside actually can improve your health outcomes and it's just super fun. I'm so much happier when I'm riding my bike than stuck in a car. So definitely car replacement because you can bring your kids. In this bike you can bring up to three kids. So if you've been riding your car and thinking, ah, I wish I could ride my bike, uh, but I don't have enough room or I don't really want to experience, uh, you know, riding with a trailer. Trailers are okay, but handling is as if you tried it, it it's not awesome because the trailer is kind of bumping you around and the kids are way back there and you're wondering if they're safe when they're up here. It's awesome because you can have these conversations with them. You can see what's going on. You know, you've got communication happening. It's just uh, everybody's happier that way. It's a lot of fun. 
Um, so yes, you can use it as a car replacement to bring kids along. You know what? We've got a lot of customers buying cargo bikes to put their pets in. So that's pretty cool. You could put uh, your dog in there. Uh, just stuff. You know, like this is how I do my grocery shopping. I generally don't drive. Uh, when I can avoid it, I'm always on my bike. So that means I'm doing my grocery shopping with the load. I'm going to the recycling. You know, when we get a box into the bike shop, a new uh, bike, we actually cut up the cardboard, put it in here and ride over to the recycling. And, you know, I'm just thrilled to be able to do things like that. And the cargo bike allows me to do that. It really allows me to kind of do this cargo bike challenge, I tell people, put your car keys and your bike keys side by side. Every time you go to get your car keys, ask yourself, hey, could I take my bike? And after a week, you'll just be riding your bike all the time because it's so easy to do. Uh, how about camping? Maybe you want to go camping with your bike. This would be great. Just throw your camping gear in there and you're good to go. It is super fun. And so the question really becomes, well, why wouldn't you want one? <laughs> like, what's the downside? And well, there is a one downside. As you can see, it's big. You're not going to put this on the back of your car and take it somewhere. But hey, with the dual batteries, you could just ride there. Why take the car? You could just ride to where you want it to go. Now, in all seriousness, if you do want to transport it with you, you could put it in the back of a truck or a minivan, but you could actually disassemble it if you needed to. There's four bolts here that take the front part off the back, uh, but it's not something you're going to want to be doing on a daily basis. But uh, otherwise, you know, cargo bikes are super fun and so versatile. You can just do anything with it. From a riding perspective, there's no downside. It, it, it handles really, really well. It's so much fun to ride. You won't have any uh, problems handling it and you've got so much room for cargo. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, specific components on the bike. I mentioned this idea of Reason Mueller's control technology, and uh, I can't emphasize it enough. You really do need to come and try it if you can. With this rear shock, so we've got a Xfusion Glide. It's a coil or spring uh, shock on, on the back here, uh, and this independent rear suspension. Your rear wheel is always on the ground. It's not bouncing around when you're cornering at high speeds. It's gripping to the road. It's like riding on Velcro. It's uh, just incredible. Uh, it also is isolating you from all of the bumps and so that means you are less likely to be thrown around when you're riding on uh, rougher roads it gives you more control over the bike you feel safer you feel more confident that's really important because if you're getting thrown around and you've got a load up here you start to feel unsafe and you stop riding as much or you don't go the way that you'd like to go with this you can go the safest way even if it's a rougher road but it's a side road there's not much traffic on it poorly maintained no problem the bike's going to handle it and now you've got that peace and quiet instead of all the cars zooming by you on the highway so it's really nice having that uh, uh, control technology and we have like I said the Xfusion Glide here we've got some adjustability to we can put different springs on here as well depending on the uh, weight of your uh, gear and yourself and of course up front we also have the uh, suspension fork this is a Suntour XCM32 I love the fact that we've got a through axle on here so really nice and stiff and sturdy uh, keeps you uh, really again very confident got a little bit of travel on there again to just help uh, smooth things out give you more control over the bike you're less likely to be thrown around and of course your passengers are going to be a lot happier there as well. Uh, well, we're up front here. I should mention we've got these uh, fantastic Schwalbe balloon tires. It's a Big Ben Plus. So a balloon tire is a high volume of air at low pressure. That allows the tire to also be a little bit of a bump absorption for you, a little bit of suspension. And we've got these uh, reflective sidewalls as well. A fair degree of puncture resistance, which is nice on an, on an e-bike. Of course, it's a 20 inch at the front, and it's uh, I think it's by 2.15 inches wide. So it gives you lots of traction. We have customers that are actually mountain biking with this and I'll show you on the ride test. You could actually go mountain biking with it and these tires are actually doing a really good job of it. Um, really the only weakness is if you decide you want to ride in mud a lot, then you might want to change those out to something with knobs, but wet weather, wet pavement, wet gravel, wet grass, all those types of things, the uh, bike is working really well with these tires. Um, we do have these uh, SKS full coverage fenders with a little mud flap on the bottom here so everybody's going to stay dry inside. Speaking of staying dry inside, I may forget to mention it later, uh, reason Miller does make a rain cover for this so your your kids or you can also put a, a cargo cover on it uh, the uh, cargo could also stay nice and dry depending on the weather so in the back here we also have a Schwalbe Big Ben Plus but of course we've got a 26 inch wheel which is nice uh, in terms of handling uh, the bike this is gonna span gaps really really well uh, also balloon tire also the reflective sidewall which is really nice to uh, keep you safe and a nice sturdy rim lots of uh, spokes here to just really accommodate the uh, higher weight that the uh, cargo bike is going to be supporting
One of the great things about the load is it's really adjustable. So if you're using this like a car replacement and you have multiple riders, there's a couple of really cool features here. So we do have an adjustable angle on the stem here and it's tool free. So basically, uh, let's see if I can do it with one hand. We open up the levers here and the other lever there we go. And coming over to the side here, you can see we have a uh, pin here on a uh, release. We just slide this see the pin there there we go slide that in and I can adjust the angle and that pin locks in and then I close the levers up so that allows you to adjust to three different positions so you can bring the handlebars closer or further away depending on the riders preference the other great thing is we can adjust the height so it's a telescopic height here we just open up the quick release here and again we've got a pin so it's really secure a lot of times adjustable things that are tool free end up coming loose while you're riding obviously this isn't going to come loose because we've got this pin here so just push that in and we can drop the bars to be lower or higher there we go see i can get it second position there and then just close up the clamp and we're good to go so we've got that adjustability uh, forwards and backwards higher and lower which is great the other cool thing is when we adjust the uh, seat post which is on a quick release here you can see we've got quite the angle on that so what happens is typically with a taller rider they also want the reach to be a little bit further and so as you move the seat post up it goes backwards from the handlebars moving you out a little bit so that's a nice uh, design feature as well in terms of the adjustability so while we're looking at the uh, cockpit here I should mention we've got these ergon ergonomic grips the GP ones super comfortable uh, they're locking and adjustable so you can adjust the angle on that which makes it uh, really very comfortable uh, we have relatively narrow handlebars here which is interesting um, um, a lot of times people are concerned about the maneuverability, but uh, you know when you measure this It's actually not much wider than the say the handlebars on a mountain bike And so they've got these relatively narrow bars, but uh, we could change those if you wanted to go with a little bit wider bar um, It does uh, make a very positive effect on the handling of the uh, bike But again, that would be an easy thing to change uh, other points of uh, comfort here. We do have the uh, Sele Royale, I think this is the looking, uh, yeah, uh, 3D. It's a nice saddle. It's got some gel in there. Very, very comfortable. People usually don't end up changing those out, but uh, you certainly could if you wanted to. Speaking of changes, I probably would change the pedals. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, normal. Most bikes we sell come with what we call tester pedals. So you can ride the bike. But, you know, uh, if you're riding like I do all year in the rain, you'll want to consider changing those out to something wider with pins so that your foot isn't sliding off in the rain. But uh, to start out with, they certainly uh, work very well. No complaints there. So from a safety perspective, we do of course have hydraulic disc brakes. It's a must have on e-bikes in general and definitely on a cargo bike. We've got these Tektro uh, hydraulic disc brakes with a nice big rotor in the uh, back here for uh, stopping the Tektro uh, hydraulic uh, disc there. And also in the front, we've got hydraulic brakes, of course, there also with a nice large rotor. That's a 180 on the front and uh, just gives you tremendous stopping power. And it is a 203 on the back here. So again, lots and lots of stopping power. Okay, speaking of safety, again, we've got the reflective sidewalls. We have a reflector at the back here, which is uh, really cool on both sides. We've got reflectors on the front forks and we've got these great lights. So this is the uh, B&M IQX, super, super bright. It is running off of your main battery, so you don't have to worry about recharging it. From the factory, r &M actually ships these so the lights automatically come on. Great safety feature. If you wish, we can reprogram that for you. But you know, they're not draining a lot of your battery and it's worth having. On the back here, another really bright light uh, mounted on the rear fender. And again, full coverage fender, nice and stable. It's mounted with a couple stays here, as well as to the frame down there. So it gives you uh, lots of stability, lots of coverage, because you are going to want to ride this in all weather. Another great feature that I love about the uh, load here is this kickstand. It is a fantastic kickstand, super wide, a couple springs on there, and really easy to uh, release. Um, <laughs> you may see me do this at some point in the ride test video. I actually ride and it just uh, releases. Uh, but ideally, you know, you don't want to do that. You just push forward and that's going to put the kickstand up. 
and to uh, put it back down, just put your foot down there, foot towards you, there we go. The great thing about this kickstand is it's super, super stable. So you can get, uh, you know, kids climbing in and out of there and the bike isn't going to tip. You don't have to worry about stabilizing it. It's very, very solid. And that's uh, a weakness we see sometimes on other cargo bikes. This is really easy to deploy, easy to release, and stable enough that kids can climb all over it. And that's uh, an important thing to be looking for. A couple other nice features. We do have the uh, Avis uh, frame lock on here, a cafe lock. So the key that we use for the frame lock is the same key as what we use for the battery. I'm just gonna grab that here for you so I can show you how that works. And uh, we've got the two batteries here, which I'll talk about in a little while. Uh, but the same key works for both batteries and the frame lock. I simply put the key in here. There we go, turn it. And on the other side here, again, hard to do with just one hand, there's a thing there that I press and you see now there's a steel bar going through the rear wheel. So now the bike can't be ridden away when I uh, take the key and lock it and just unlock it, I turn the key and it releases. So that bar prevents the bike from being ridden away. Now, in a lot of situations that's all I do. If I'm going to the bakery, the butcher, I have my eye on the bike, I go ahead and I lock it with that and everything's good to go. If I were staying somewhere a little bit longer, maybe going to the grocery store and doing, you know, a weekly shop with the bike, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the optional chain. You can choose to get this or not when you configure the bike, but Abus makes this really cool chain that goes into this port here on the side. That allows you to then lock around, uh, you know, bike rack or something like that and secure it. The cool thing about the chain is it uses the lock that's built in to the uh, bike here. So we don't need another key and the chain is relatively light for a chain because it doesn't have the locking mechanism. And uh, they've even, when you cho choose that option, they even give you this little chain holder here. Now I've been using it for holding water bottles, <laughs> but technically it's for holding your uh, chain. Um, over here you've got another little compartment which is handy. This is the one that I use for the chain, but you can see there's a little mesh compartment in here for uh, keys or your wallet or whatever you want to store in there, which is uh, quite handy and it just all goes up there. So that's uh, lots of storage, really well thought out. And that's one of the things you'll notice if you come and try a bunch of different cargo bikes and spend some time on them like I have, once you spend, you know, a few weeks, you kind of get a sense of, you know what, these guys, are obviously using this bike every day. When they designed this bike, they knew exactly what the things that they wanted, the things that were important, and they incorporated it. And sometimes when you ride other bikes, you know, you can kind of get the sense of, well, why didn't they do that? Or why didn't they do this? And maybe it's because they're not actually using it like you are. It's very clear that Reason Mueller is using this on a daily basis, and when they've designed it, they've made it really usable. So I love having that chain lock. Again, this is a really big, relatively heavy bike. With that frame lock, you know, it's going to take a couple of people and a truck to steal this. So to some degree, I probably am maybe a little more lax than I should be with locking it up. I often just use the frame lock. Um, but if I'm concerned about a couple of people coming along, putting it in the back of the truck, then I use the chain and wrap that around the uh, bike lock. Uh, you know, again, little clever things. So the chain they use is longer than a, a regular chain because they recognize, look, it's a, it's a big of a bigger bike. You've got three kids in there. You don't want to be spending your time kind of trying to get it exactly lined up with whatever you're locking it to. So the chain is actually long enough that as long as you're close, you know, you'll be able to wrap it around. And that's really one of the things that we're looking for in a cargo bike is you want it to make life easy. You want it to be convenient. You want it to just be jump on and ride. An example I often give to people is when I go grocery shopping, I can literally get to and from the grocery store faster on my bike than my car. And part of that is because I'm actually parking my car, or not my car, <laughs> parking my cargo bike right at the front door. So I'm not looking for a parking spot and not having to then walk all the way to the front door. I'm there. And again, just an example of how convenient it can be. Another nice option you can uh, configure when you uh, order these from Germany, and again, these are all custom made in Germany. Reason Mueller doesn't have a warehouse full of cargo e-bikes. Uh, when you say, hey, this is the color and what I want and the drivetrain and the different features, then it's built for you. And uh, so you can choose to add the optional rear rack here. The cool thing is this is connected to the uh, seat tube here, so it's actually part of uh, the suspension. In other words, it's also isolated from the bumps. So if you put a child seat back on here, or groceries, 
or eggs or something like that, they're actually not going to experience all the bumps either because it's part of the uh, suspension. And uh, again, just another little attention to detail. Rather than a spring-loaded cl clamp, which over time the spring wears out and then it starts rattling the whole time you ride, they use this bungee cord, which is obviously silent, uh, but adjustable. So you can just slide this off to make it uh, bigger and put, uh, you know, whatever you need to put under there if you've forgotten to bring your bags along. And of course, uh, you know, you do have standard uh, width uh, uh, bars here that you can put pannier bags on, a little place to put a little... Uh, clip if you your bags have those so if you've got three kids in the front you can still bring you know your laptop and groceries and whatever else you want on the uh, rear rack if you are just grocery shopping by yourself what I love is not having to bring my bags not having to balance things out I just toss everything into the box there put the cover on and ride home okay so I have both the load 75 touring and the graphite uh, black here and the load 75 vario in the white the 75 Vario comes with the low sidewalls. You can see the uh, sidewalls are lower here. And the graphite, the touring, uh, we've configured it with the high sidewalls with the uh, tarp here. Now, of course, the choice is yours. Uh, this just happens to be the way we decide to configure them. But all these options are something you can configure when you get it to built for you in Germany. So one of the advantages of the lower side walls is it is easy for uh, kids to climb in and out there. We've configured this one with the uh, three child seat option. So when I flip this up and put the backrest back here, just move the seat belts out of the way. There we go. There's a there to hold them in. There we go, you've got the footwell, and that's one of the great reasons to actually get this third child seat option. Even if you don't think you'll need three child seats, when you get the third child seat option, you get this really handy footwell, which is great for getting the, you know, you're just putting two kids here. They've got somewhere for their feet down below rather than uh, stretched out in front. And of course, if you're not needing the, the spot for the third child, you can always just fold that back in and use that for cargo or whatever you wish. Now, some people prefer the high sidewalls. You can see it's quite a bit higher. When you look at the uh, white one there, you can see the sidewall just comes up the back to the, uh, racing there and then a little bit higher there on here it's higher all the way across could make it a little bit harder for get kids to get in and out but some people find that they prefer that uh, they think it's a little bit more secure perhaps uh, this is with optional uh, cover here and you can see it's it's really very clever they've got the shock cord in here that uh, goes over three kind of grommets there on uh, both the uh, sides here and uh, comes around the back so really easy to get on and off just lift that off and you can open up uh, from side to side if you're having this permanently mounted on here maybe you don't have kids in here at all uh, then you can see there's actually a little grommet here so you would be able to in a hole here so you could actually permanently mount it uh, across the uh, head tube here if you didn't have the uh, seat rest here. So then it's really secure. But it's uh, super handy for hauling uh, gear. I use it all the time. You know, when I go grocery shopping, I just throw everything in there. I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, securing anything. Just toss it in, put the cover on, and now everything is secure. You can see we also have the optional uh, luggage tray here, which is uh, pretty cool. So this is removable, but allows you to put things underneath and on top of the tray here. And, or if you have a couple kids in here, obviously the, the third child can't sit in there. If you have a couple kids in there, they can put their feet under there, and then you can still put stuff on top of here. Now, you'd probably want to put light stuff or secure it somehow. You don't want it falling onto them. But it's just incredibly versatile, all these different configuration options. And, uh, you know, if you don't need the tray, it uh, easily removes. You just kind of slide it forward and it pops out there and put it back in just like that. So it's, uh, again, really versatile. Uh, let me go over explain the drivetrain options. So as I mentioned, this is the uh, Load 75 Touring. What that means, really, the only difference between the Touring and the Vario is the transmission. So on this bike here, you can see you've got, well, you know, a traditional gearing system. You've got the cassette and your chain and your derailleur. We've got the Shimano Dior XT, so really high-end uh, drivetrain, which is great because the shifts are nice and smooth, very reliable. Um, we've got a nice big climbing gear here to make it really easy to get up the uh, hills. I think this is an 11 to... Uh, I'm not sure the size of the uh, cassette here. I'll have to double check. It is on the website. And um, so nice big climbing gear. With this traditional type of uh, shifting system, of course, you have the trigger shifters up here. It's an SLX, so they actually have a uh, visual indicator of the gears that you're in, and it is a trigger system, so you can push with your thumb here to shift to make it easier to pedal. 
pull this with your index finger or push it if you prefer to make it harder to pedal. But because it's a traditional gearing system, you can only do that while you are pedaling. When you're stopped, you can't shift because the chain, of course, has to jump up or down on the cassette here. And the only way it can do that is by the derailleur moving while the chain is moving and move that chain up or down. So that's one of the downsides. I mean, this is very simple. Uh, any bike shop anywhere in the world is going to be able to service this for you because this is pretty much what every bike has. But you can't shift while you're stopped, and this does require some maintenance. So, you know, the cable can stretch, the shifting can get out of whack. If you end up hitting your derailleur, it needs to be kind of readjusted back into place. You want to keep this clean. The cassette here, the uh, pulley wheels here, you want to keep that clean, the chain clean. Uh, that's going to help with shifting. And this, the chain on, on both bikes, is going to need to be replaced from time to time. And the cassette also will be need to be replaced from time to time, especially if you're not careful and don't replace the chain before it starts stretching. Then that can wear your cassette more frequently or quickly, and then you're replacing it more quickly. And then from time to time, you may have to replace these pulley wheels and some of the derailleurs. So there is a little bit uh, more maintenance with the uh, touring system. Come over here to the Vario. The Vario gives you the uh, Enviolo powered by NuVinci continuously variable transmission. It has a 380% gear ratio, so roughly the same gear ratio as the Touring version. So uh, it's not like there's a downside in terms of capability of this bike. It's actually the same capability. And a few more uh, benefits, such as the fact that you can actually shift while you're stopped. So we can come up over here to the controllers. Instead of trigger shifters, with this really cool twist shift system here. You can see the little cyclist going up a hill right now. If I want it to be harder to pedal, I simply twist towards me and see how he's, uh, the cyclist is on a less steep hill. And if I'm going up a steeper hill, I twist this and it becomes steeper. So that's really cool. And I always explain to people, you know, when you're first starting out, you want it on a little bit of a hill. That's going to make it easier to pedal. As you get going, your legs will start spinning too quickly. Twist that towards you. When you get to the bigger hill, you need it to be easier to pedal. Twist that away from you. I'm doing that while I'm stopped, which is brilliant. I can do that while I'm pedaling. And the nice thing is, is if you get a hill with a variable grade, you can simply dial this into exactly where you want. It's not clicking. There's not a specific number of gears. It's infinitely variable between the highest and the lowest gear ratio. So you can dial in exactly what you want. On a cargo bike, this is brilliant because I can tell you when you're riding, especially with passengers, you're paying attention to traffic, you're paying attention to the kids, you're just kind of keeping your eye on everything. And if you have to stop suddenly, or even if you don't have to stop suddenly, but you just don't have the, uh, you know, the foresight to downshift every single time you might have to stop, this is great because you can stop and then go ahead and shift. You don't have to think ahead. Uh, again, that's hard to do in traffic. Traffic light changes suddenly, cuts you off. Oh man, you're in the hard gear and with a cargo bike, it's really hard to get going if you've got kids in the front there and your hardest gear. So this is great. You can go ahead, shift to an easier gear after you've stopped and uh, super convenient that way. It, it also has a lower maintenance requirement because really there's nothing to adjust here. It's all self-contained, it's sealed. There's no maintenance on it. There's no adjustment. Nothing needs to be done to it. After a really long time, this uh, rear sprocket here could wear out, but it would take a really long time and then that would need to be replaced, but not nearly as frequently as the cassette on the uh, traditional drivetrain system there. Now we do still have a chain and you want to keep that uh, clean and oiled. And we do have a chain tensioner down here. So you'll want to every now and then keep that clean as well, but it's not going to interfere with your shifting or anything like that, like it could on the uh, traditional system. So with the uh, load Vario, you get all those benefits of the uh, continuously variable transmission. In theory, I believe there is a slight amount of efficiency loss with the uh, Enviolo hub. I'm not sure that I've noticed it. I've ridden, you know, spent quite a bit of time riding uh, bikes with the CVT, the uh, Enviolo hub, and comparing it with the touring version here. I don't know that I could say that I noticed a difference uh, between the uh, gearing in terms of efficiency. Certainly there's a lot of benefits to having this. Um, really, occasionally we find people that just love shifting through gears. They've ridden a bike all their life. They just intuitively always are shifting and downshifting and don't care about shifting while they're stopped and they 
you know enjoy adjusting and cleaning things and so then the touring you know definitely is worth considering because it also has a lower upfront cost but if you're like most people and you know you just want to ride and you don't have to worry about the gears and maintenance and stuff like that then the Vario is definitely a good option to consider. Okay, and let's talk about the uh, motor. Reason Mueller is using the Bosch Performance Line CX. It's a mid-drive motor. You definitely want a mid-drive motor on any bike, and especially on a cargo bike. The weight is in the center, lower to the ground, which is nice. It is driving the chain, which is how a bike is normally uh, driven by the chain. And so it's helping you. As you pedal, it helps you move the chain along. That means when you change gears, in this case we've got a continuously variable transmission, but in the case of the Touring, you have regular gears. When you change those gears, it impacts directly on the motor. So now your motor has a transmission. You change to an easier gear to climb the hill, the motor also is now in an easier gear. And that's really important, especially on a cargo bike. You've got a heavy load in there, you're trying to go up a steep hill. You want to be able to be in an easier gear, and when you do that, it impacts directly on the motor because it's a, a mid-drive motor. But we've also got the Performance Line CX, that's Bosch's highest torque motor. Torque is what we care about for getting up the hills. We're not so concerned about the wattage rating on the motor. People make a big deal about that. A lot of times the numbers are just made up. Realistically, we want a lot of torque. This has 75 Newton meters of torque. So tremendous amount of torque to get us up the hills. You can climb almost anything with this bike. And uh, that's because of that torque that you're getting from the Bosch Performance Line CX. The Bosch system is sensing your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, your cadence, that is how quickly your uh, legs are spinning, and the speed of the bike, there's a speed sensor back there, a thousand times per second. So it's basically reading your mind and responding accordingly. That's super important on a cargo bike because if you want to pedal lightly because you've got to get around some barriers or something on the trail, you don't want the bike surging on you and giving you too much power, which is what most bikes with a hub motor will do. Uh, it's dangerous, right? You could end up getting injured, hurting your kids. You don't want that. You want a mid-drive motor like the Bosch here, which is very, very reliable. They've got a great service network. Pretty much any bike shop in the world can work on Bosch. Uh, units will have the diagnostic software. Super reliable um, and very, very safe. Uh, the batteries are safe and the motor's safe. So when you are trying to get around barriers and you pedal very lightly, it knows that you're doing that and just gives you a little bit of power that you need. It's again, it's like it's reading your mind. So it's a fantastic uh, drive unit. I definitely uh, recommend it. I love riding Bosch bikes. They are really uh, great to work with. So we also, powering the bike, uh, optionally, you can get two Bosch Power Pack 500s. So it gives you tremendous range. These are standard Bosch. Uh, batteries. Uh, Reason Mueller couldn't say, well, we don't like how those look, we'll make our own a battery. And, you know, different with Shimano or Broza, those kinds of motors, companies can do that. What I like about Bosch saying, no, you have to use our batteries, is we know that seven or eight years from now, if you need a replacement battery or a spare battery, you're going to be able to get those from Bosch. If the bike manufacturer was making their own batteries, mm, then it's a matter of will they actually have those and for how long, especially if they keep changing them every few years. With these, we know Bosch has got you covered. They've even done things like these are power pack 500, so 500 watt hours of, of capacity, tremendous range. Um, previously, 400 was the maximum size they had. When they came out with the 500, they made it backwards compatible. So you could have bought a Bosch bike four years ago, walk into the store, buy a Power Pack 500, because of course we have them in stock, put it on and ride away. So it's really nice knowing that even the little things that Bosch does, like the dual battery system actually draws 5% from each battery and switches back and forth. That prolongs the lifespan of your battery because when a battery is continuously discharged, that puts higher stress on the battery, that shortens the lifespan. By alternating back and forth, it helps to prolong the lifespan because it gets a little bit of a rest. So, very clever. You can charge both batteries on the bike if you wish. There's a charging flap right there. Or you can use the key that I was showing you earlier and remove either or both of the power packs and charge them inside if you wish. We have two display options when configuring the load in, uh, to be made for you in Germany. You can go either with the uh, Kiox display that you see here or the uh, larger Intuvia display. And I'm going to go through both of the displays right now so you can see the options for both. The Bosch Kiox display is mounted magnetically to the bike. It's strong enough that it's not going to fall off while you're riding, but it's easy enough that you can just remove it. It can be permanently mounted to the bike if you prefer. There is a possibility of using a set screw to mount it there. But it is nice being able to remove it, and it's fairly easy to remove. We do have a Gorilla Glass a screen, and it is full color. It also has a built-in battery, so when you remove it from the bike, you can actually still see your uh, trip information. Now, uh, the uh, buttons uh, basically allow you to power it on or off uh, when it's off the uh, bike. 
So since there's no way of scrolling through the information on the screens when it's off the bike, it's just going to automatically scroll through everything from your recent ride for you, which is quite handy. When you put it back on the bike, of course, the full functionality uh, returns to it. So the two buttons on the uh, display here is the power button and the lights button. You can actually also press and hold the light button to enter the pairing mode uh, because the uh, Kiox display is Bluetooth enabled. I'll talk about that in a few moments, but you can connect a Bluetooth heart rate monitor. And there's also an app that you can use to connect your phone to the uh, bike as well. Over here on the left is where you control the display while it's on the bike. So you've got the plus and the minus to control the levels of assistance. Uh, right and left to control the uh, screens and a select button in the middle here. And these do work fairly well even with gloves and there is a little bit of response when you're pressing them so you can actually feel whether or not you've pressed it or not. You can maybe hear that clicking. There we go. So heading back to the uh, screen here, this is kind of your main screen, your home screen. There's a bunch of different uh, display options that we access through the right and left buttons here. But while we're on the uh, main screen, I'll walk you through the options here. Top left corner you can see the uh, clock, current level of assistance, and because it's uh, a color display, the assistance levels are color coded and that uh, follows through to all the screens. So if I move this down to off, uh, which is right here, it's gray, and when I press the plus over on the remote here, uh, you can see it moves up to eco, and so uh, the writing here is uh, green, your light being on is green, and also down here this graph, which I'll we'll talk about in a few moments. And as I increase the levels, tour becomes blue, uh, EMTB is purple, and turbo is red. Uh, like I said, you can see that your lights are on. Here, this is really handy. You do have a percentage indicator for your battery life. If you have a dual battery bike, that's showing you the combined uh, percentage of both uh, batteries. Uh, at the top here, you can see that we're right now in metrics. We've got kilometers per hour. Our current speed, this is an e-shift bike, so we can see the current gear that we're in. And a few other really interesting data points as we're riding. So once we start riding, there's actually going to be two bars that are going to uh, light up here. One is actually going to show you the assistance from the bike, and the second is going to show you your own uh, energy expenditure while you're riding. And so that'll dynamically adjust as you ride, which is really cool. Up here you have your performance indicator, and so you can see there's actually two bars here with a little gap in between them. And that gap represents your average speed. And so when you're riding and you're above your average speed, then the black bar here is going to be to the right of that gap, uh, depending on how fast you're going. And uh, if you're riding below your average speed, then uh, you can see that black bar right now is below the middle, and that will also adjust as you ride. So that's kind of your main screen, the screen that you'll be uh, riding with uh, most frequently. Nice, big, easy to read numbers. Again, the color. Uh, coding here helps you if you're having a hard time reading that it's on tour you'll just know that it's uh, on blue which is tour and also your current uh, gear if you've got the uh, e-shift so if I come over to the remote here and I press the right button now we can see some other information we see a big clock and your range uh, estimate and of course that range estimate is dynamically calculated as you ride it's based on the last few kilometers the Bosch system is really clever, so it actually knows how much charge has gone into your batteries and how much charge has gone out, and so that tells it how much is left. Then it also knows how much you've used over the last few kilometers, so it does the math to project forward how many kilometers you've got left to go. So if I move that down to Eco, you can see that my range increases quite a bit, and if I move that up to Turbo, you can see that my range decreases. So that adjusts not only based on the level of assistance, but also based on the last few kilometers that you rode. So if you go up a steep hill for a few kilometers, this is going to drop a fair, uh, fair bit because it's saying, look, if you keep going up this hill, this is how much further you can go. As you level out and keep riding, it's going to readjust and say, oh, okay, based on the last few kilometers, uh, this is now how much further you can go. This can be uh, reset as well to kind of the um, uh, ideal values or real world values rather than based on the last few kilometers that you've went, and I'll show that to you in a few moments. Um, let me go to the next screen here. We've got the trip distance and the uh, ride time. You've got your power, so that's the wattage, how hard you're pedaling, and your current cadence, which is really handy to see. Next screen, we've got the average speed and the maximum speed. While I'm on any of these screens here, if I want to reset the data, I can just press and hold the select button. It says, do you want to reset the trip data? And I'll say yes, and press the select button again. And now it's reset, and we're back to zero for average and maximum speed. 
Now the cool thing about the Kiox display is you don't have to manually reset it. You can program it, and I believe it comes from the factory this way, to automatically reset itself once a day. So at a certain time of the day, it'll actually reset the values to zero. I really like that. I find with the Intuvia display, I don't always have the habit of resetting my trip counter before the ride. I get going on the ride and I wonder, oh, how far have I gone? Oh, I forgot to reset it from yesterday. So with the uh, Kiox, having that uh, ability to automatically reset is quite handy. The next screen has four uh, different uh, data points, uh, all of which we've seen before, your distance, your range, your wattage, and the uh, heart rate. And when we go to the next screen here, we have a very large heart rate monitor. And again, this will work with any Bluetooth heart rate monitor. The next screen is showing us the calories burned on this ride and the total distance on the bike. So that's the uh, total odometer. Obviously, that can't be reset. And finally, we're back to the uh, settings screen here. The interesting thing about the uh, Kiox display is if we keep scrolling to the right, we'll go back to the home screen and uh, it just cycles through all of them. Of course, we could just use the left to go back. The settings screen here shows you the battery percentage for each battery if it's a dual battery bike. It also is going to show you your uh, synchronization settings. So if you've paired this with a your phone through Bluetooth, it'll show you the Bluetooth status, it'll show you whether or not it's uploading data, and it even will show you the battery level of your smartphone. This is where also where we access the settings menu, so uh, when we see this here we can press the select button, that gets us into the settings. We've got the option of registering your bike, I don't think that's functional right now. Um, you'd need to uh, download the uh, app and then you can uh, register your bike with Bosch. You can go to the My Bike setting, and again, I'm just using the up and down to cycle through here and the Select button to select. So here you can see when it was last reset. We've set it up to be auto reset once a day. You could change that to off or after four hours. When you're in a sub menu like this to go back, you just press the left scrolling button. We'll go back there, and this is where you can reset the range calculation. So I mentioned that it uh, dynamically adjusts based on the last few kilometers that you rode. You can actually reset the values to the default. Again, when you've got OK and Cancel, we just use the right and left to cycle through and then press the Select button to select it. So now it's reset those values to theoretical values or ideal values. Uh, with the E-Shift bikes, you have this E-Shift menu and that allows you to change the uh, start gear. You can choose to automatically downshift with certain uh, hubs. Uh, so you can turn that on or off and you can choose which gear that goes to. We also can adjust the wheel circumference in here. That's going to uh, adjust the, uh, very slightly adjust the uh, display speed. So if you find that your speed on the display is not quite accurate, you can adjust your wheel circumference. When we go to the components menu here, we can actually see the version numbers of the software and hardware of all the components, along with the serial numbers of all the components on the bike. This is quite interesting. You can also see the operating hours and uh, odometer again of the uh, motor, your battery information, serial numbers, and uh, all sorts of information there along with the e-shift and the software version of the e-shift. Go back to the uh, main menu. We can go to the Bluetooth screen here where we can turn the Bluetooth on and then pair your phone. Easiest way to do that is go to the eBike Connect portal. You can set up a free account, download the app, and with the app downloaded, uh, after the end of each ride, the display will actually communicate with your phone and uh, allow you to automatically upload all of your trip information. So that'll uh, show you a map of where you went, your power usage, your wattage, your cadence, uh, all of that type of information is going to be uploaded to the portal where you can then choose to export that to Strava if you wish. Uh, it's really quite clever and uh, you can see all that information on your phone as well. Now currently with the Kiox display, navigation isn't an option with the uh, phone, uh, but you can certainly pair all of uh, the phone and uh, synchronize all of your data automatically after each ride, which is quite clever. And the Bosch e-bike portal will then store all of that information from the rides as well. In the system uh, settings here, we can go through, you can adjust the brightness from automatic to manual. I'll leave it on uh, automatic. You can adjust your time, the date, 
and your time zone. By the way, if your time is incorrect, it may be that it's just the wrong time zone. Perhaps it wasn't set up correctly uh, when your dealer set it up for you, so you can just go in there and adjust the time zone. Choose whether you want 24-hour clock or a regular AM, PM. You can enable a bright background. You can turn off uh, metric to imperial units. You can change your language as well in here. And you can do a factory reset if you're having problems, but we won't do that right now. And uh, the information screen just gives us some information on the uh, Bosch system and how to reach them. So that's all found under the uh, settings button there. So as I mentioned, the display is uh, removable, and uh, when you do that, you'll notice there is a USB port right under there. So that USB port offers a thousand milliamps of power, so that will actually charge uh, an iPhone or Android uh, smartphone. It is a, it's not a proprietary cable format, it is a micro USB, but you will need a micro USB A to micro USB B cable, which is a little bit harder to find. Most of the USB cables have the bigger end. Uh, this has a micro at both ends, and uh, so of course Bosch does make those cables. Again, they're not proprietary, but it's handy to use those because you know that they'll work. That will allow you to charge a phone. Uh, with the Kiox uh, display, we also do have a walk mode if your bike manufacturer has uh, chosen to enable that. So you'll notice there's a little button here. I don't know if you can see it. There, it looks like somebody walking. Uh, so if we press that, you'll notice that when I do that, nothing happens. The bike doesn't move. Uh, so that's because right now, two things, the bike is off, so let me press the plus to go to eco. Now, try it again. Again, nothing happens. But a very informative menu comes up here that says, look, to activate walk assistance, press and hold the plus button. So now, if I press and hold the plus, immediately the bike starts moving at a walking pace, and as soon as I release the plus, it stops. Now, that's a great safety feature because you're not going to want the bike to uh, run away on its own, so as soon as you re release the plus button, it's going to stop moving. Walk mode is really handy in situations where you're not able to ride the bike. Maybe you've got some stairs that you're uh, pushing the bike along, or you're going on the ferry and uh, they don't want you riding off of the ferry ramp, and you've got you know some heavy bags on the back of your bike. You can very easily use the walk mode to allow the bike to move along at a walking pace, and all you have to do is steer it. The Intuvia display is removable. You can just uh, press the little tab there and slide it towards you and it actually will operate while it's off the bike. It does have a built-in USB or rechargeable battery. You can charge that battery through the USB port but it'll also charge when you have it on the bike. So I've never actually had a need to charge my Intuvia display because it will charge while it's on the bike and you're riding. So it is handy. You can bring it uh, with you and uh, you can actually access all of your information while the uh, bike is off the display because you do have buttons on the display here as well. If you prefer you can permanently mount the display to your bike. There is a port here for a set screw, comes with the display holder, and you can uh, kind of loosen this off, slide it around, put a screw through there, and into the uh, bottom of the uh, display. Sorry, I've got it covered with a sticker there. Um, and that'll allow you to permanently mount it, but most people find they do like to be able to remove it uh, for security and to uh, protect the uh, display. I mentioned the USB port, and that's for diagnostics so that we can do here, do updates for your bike. Um, but you can also charge a USB device through here. Now, it does only offer 500 milliamps of uh, power. So if you have an iPhone, it'll kind of maintain a charge on it, but it won't charge it up. Whereas I do find with an Android phone, usually it'll actually charge that as well. So that's a handy feature to be able to charge your phone. The uh, display, when it's mounted on the bike, you can control it uh, remotely, obviously, with the remote here. You don't want to be pressing buttons on the display while you're riding. So you do have the uh, plus to move the assistance up, the uh, minus to move the assistance down, and the I button to cycle through the information that appears on the screen at the bottom here. We also do have a uh, walk button here, and the walk mode is uh, a two-step process. First, you press and hold the walk button, and when I do that, you'll notice nothing happens because the assistance is currently off. So I'll press the plus, bring it up to uh, eco, which is the lowest level of assistance. And now when I press and hold the plus button, still nothing happens, but on the display it says walk assist plus. That's your visual cue that now you press and hold the plus button. While you do that, the bike will move along at a walking pace, about four or five kilometers an hour. All you have to do is steer it. When you want it to stop moving, you simply release the plus button and it'll stop moving. So the walk mode can be really handy if you're somewhere 
where you've got uh, stairs or if you're getting off the ferry, they don't like it when you ride off the ferry ramp and you've got you know bags on the back or something like that, uh, then you'll just be able to um, have the bike move itself along and you just have to steer it. So on the display we have lots of information and uh, very easy to read, nice big numbers. So you can see at the top here we do have an indicator of your battery and uh, that's uh, 4 uh, out of 5 bars right now. So it's uh, basically 20% increment. It's going to show you what your uh, remaining battery life is. There's your current speed and over here you can see the current level of assistance and uh, when you're riding the bike uh, you'll see there's a graph here that lights up to show you how much assistance the motor is providing, which is pretty cool. So right now we're on Eco. Eco gives us 50% of our input power on the Bosch CX drive. It varies depending on the motor, but uh, Eco is giving us the lowest amount of assistance. We can go up to uh, Tour, which is a second level assistance. A lot of people ride in that. Pressing it again says Sport here, but this bike with the CX motor has been programmed for EMTB. So you'll notice down here when I move up to Sport, it flashes EMTB to let me know I'm in EMTB mode. Pressing uh, plus again brings me up to turbo, which is the uh, highest level of assistance. Uh, you can see that the lights are on, and down here you can see our uh, trip computer. So right now we're looking at the clock. I can press the I on the remote while we're riding the bike, or on the display here while we, uh, well, we're not riding. Of course, you can actually press the I while you're riding if you want, but I don't recommend it. Use the uh, one on the remote. So you can see our uh, current uh, information we're looking at is the clock, but if I press the I button, it'll start cycling through. There's our maximum speed. I can reset that and by pressing and holding the reset button. And interestingly, that is reset independently of the rest of the data. So when I go to the next screen, you'll see that the average speed has not been reset. But if I reset it now, the rest of the data will in fact be reset. So now you can see my trip time is zero. The range is calculated dynamically as you ride based on the current level of assistance and the uh, battery level that's left and the last few kilometers that you went. So the last few kilometers on this bike was up a very steep hill. So it's reduced the range to say, look, if you keep going up a really steep hill like that, this is how much further you can go. As you continue to ride and as your riding habits change, uh, then that will look dynamically recalculate. So it's uh, very helpful that way. Odometer on the bike, that's the total distance. That can't be reset, of course. Your trip distance, how far you've come on this trip so far. And we're back to the clock here. Uh, you do have the button here to turn the light on and off, and you can see that it is showing that the light is on there. You can access the configuration menu on the Intuvia display by pressing and holding the reset and I button together. Hold that down for a few seconds and you'll go into the configuration menu. Here we can adjust the clock, either using the power and the light button to uh, increment it or uh, the plus and minus button on the remote. The I button will cycle through the information on the screen. So here we can change the uh, wheel circumference. That's uh, basically going to change the display of the speed uh, to correct that if your tire wheel circumference changes or you put knob of your tires or something like that on. You can change your language. You can change your units from metric to uh, imperial. And uh, we can also change the time format. We'll change that to 12 hours from 24. We can turn the shift recommendations on or off when you're riding. If the motor feels that you would be more efficient by shifting to an easier or harder gear, there's actually an up and down arrow that will light up here suggesting that you might want to consider shifting. And if you find that annoying, you could certainly turn those off, but it uh, can be useful to have that information. After this, the rest of the information is just informational. It can't be edited, so you can see the number of power on hours, uh, various version numbers of the display, the software versions of the display, the serial number of the drive unit, the part number, the battery version, the battery part number, and other information. When you want to exit the programming mode, just again press and hold the reset and the I button together, and that'll bring you back to the main menu. So I usually recommend on your first uh, test ride of a uh, cargo bike, just uh, go by yourself, don't bring a passenger. On this ride, I've got a little bit of gear in the front uh, box there. I'm actually heading home from work, so I've got my laptop and some warmer clothes because it was a bit chillier this morning when I uh, rode in. And in fact, <laughs> I'm on my way to Shimanus to uh, pick up uh, supper at Bonnie Martin's. They have a great Chinese special every second Saturday. This is that Saturday, so I'm heading there. I've got a cooler bag and uh, put the food in there and then ride home. Another great use for a cargo bike. Cargo doesn't have to be children, it doesn't have to be gear, even be food. So it's gonna be a fun ride, I'm looking forward to it.
I've got the uh, handlebars very high and uh, kind of in the middle position. So I am in a very upright riding position right now. I really like being that way on a cargo bike, especially if I do have passengers. I just feel like I can uh, see around me a little bit better. This is going to be a bit of a longer ride. It's going to be, uh, you know, an hour, an hour and a half round trip because I'll probably do some sightseeing on the way. And so I like being in that more kind of relaxed position. But what I love about the load is being able to adjust it. So if I am wanting to feel ride a little bit more aggressively, feel a little sporty, I can drop the uh, bars, move them forward and go into a more aggressive riding position. The bars are fairly narrow and uh, well narrower than a mountain bike I mean they're not actually that narrow but narrower than a mountain bike perhaps and uh, they seem really well suited they're fairly flat fairly straight part of that is because if you adjust the angle uh, and you've got swept back bars it's going to be a little bit more difficult because the sweep is going to change when the angle changes of course you could easily change that if you're not planning on changing the angle you want wider bars or sweep or anything like that, easy to change. Okay, I'm heading into uh, some broken pavement here. It's very coarse pavement, uh, lots of potholes. Eventually we're gonna get into some gravel, even more potholes. And the bike's handling really well. You can see I'm actually kind of aiming <laughs> for the holes in the potholes rather than avoiding them, just to test out that suspension. And yeah, it's just soaking them up. It's doing a really good job. Um, you really don't feel much of that. It's certainly not impacting my ability to control the bike. And that's really important. You know, I see so many people using cargo bikes for kids, which is great. And really safety is so important. So you want to be able to make sure that you feel confident. You know, I'm close to 30 kilometers an hour. I'm able to kind of keep that pace in my heading without uh, having to avoid things. That's going to make me safer in traffic when I'm predictable. Keeping a steady pace and a steady heading rather than kind of avoiding all the bumps and potholes. Handling really well on the gravel here. Bumps and potholes going really well actually. You don't feel much of it at all. You can hear it a little bit uh, as you go over all those bumps. I think the other thing, I mean, I've ridden the Load 60, I probably put a couple thousand kilometers on it, and I, I love that bike, it's so much fun to ride. I would ride it even when I didn't have need of a cargo bike, it was just fun to ride. And I'm finding the same thing with Load 75, and this is really remarkable that it's so much more capacity, you can fit three kids in there, but doesn't feel that much bigger if riding it, it just it handles so well. I've spent quite a bit of time on the Paxter 80 as well, and the Paxter 80 is definitely you know, a little bit bigger, but it feels bigger riding it. This doesn't feel big, even with that uh, headrest at the front there, you know, which kind of really accentuates its length. Um, it doesn't feel like a really big, unmanageable bike. It, it's really, really easy to control. I'm going to downshift here for a hill that's coming up in the shifting. I'm riding the uh, touring version right now. Uh, I love the Vario as well with the NuVinci CVT or the Enviolo CVT powered by NuVinci as it's now called. Uh, but the uh, touring, the shifting is very smooth. You hear a little bit of uh, noise from the Bosch motor as we uh, climb under heavy loads. And you know, that's. Uh, now that I think about it, it's actually really surprising how fast, like if we go back up until this hill, I was getting pretty close to 30 kilometers an hour and I wasn't having to work at it that hard. This is a big, heavy bike, so to speak, although I just had a customer come in, had a similar bike, not full suspension from a different company, steel frame, it was like, a, I think they're saying it was 120 pounds, which is crazy. I thought this was heavy, but it doesn't feel heavy riding it and certainly is able to get up that speed no problem. Nice having the uh, lights built in. There actually is a um, 
sensor on it, so when I went into the tunnel it brightened up, and then now I'm back out in the day, it's still on, but a little bit dimmer. By the way, you, you noticed I had those barriers in the uh, trail there, and despite the length of the bike, I didn't have any problems maneuvering around them. The bike does have walk mode, so should you get yourself into a situation where, uh, you know, it's just not going to work to ride it, whether it's hard to maneuver a pedestrian area or riding off the ferry, uh, that's really handy on a, on a bike because if you've got a heavy load in there with some passengers, the walk mode is going to help you because it will propel the bike and all you have to do is steer it. Okay, this is a really steep hill. I'm going to put it up into turbo. I'm hoping the GPS will be accurate. It won't be accurate for speed wise. So right now about 11 kilometers an hour. But it should be fairly accurate for the grade. There's one point along here that it gets pretty close to 30% grade. So right now I'm in my easiest gear, cruising along at 10. I'm curious how much input I'm putting into it. I've got 180 watts that I'm putting in and I'm not having any problems climbing the hill. Uh, 170 watts, yeah, no problem. So I have to admit, the first time heading up this hill, I was a little bit anxious because I thought, oh boy, this is, you know, a heavy, long bike. Am I going to make it? But as you saw, no problem. And, you know, you're unlikely. That's a very steep hill. I mean, close to 30% grade. It's very unusual, other than here in Ladysmith, to have a hill that steep. And really, I had no problem climbing it. So that's uh, great. I'm glad to see that. And again, the gear ratio with the uh, Vario is the same, 380%. So it shouldn't be a problem to get up that hill with the Vario either. You can get going pretty fast on this bike, especially because of the weight. Getting pretty close to 50 on here. feels very stable, no concerns at all about uh, stability or, you know, my ability to stop. The bike is really easy to handle, even, uh, you know, when I've had a passenger in there, and I'll do that later in the video, you'll see it handles so well, and part of that is the full suspension, and I can't emphasize that enough, that the control technology really makes a big difference in terms of handling confidence and stability. It rolls really well, you know, I'm not pedaling now, I'm just coasting and you'd think a bike this size, you know, it would be slow and cumbersome, but it's not at all. I really like having these uh, wider tires, you know, it's maybe notice at the bottom of the hill there, there's a lot of loose gravel that can be cause for concern when you're cornering and slowing down. Uh, with these wider tires, it really grips well on the uh, gravel and it's not a problem at all. Here's a little bit of a tricky uh, section to maneuver. No problem at all. So I'm gonna cut the camera now and come back to you in a few minutes on a bike path. Okay, I'm on a bike path now and uh, in a few minutes I'll take you on uh, some gravel trails and some mud trails as well, just as a good test of the uh, tires. The suspension of course is helping with your uh, traction and control. There's a lot of uh, gravel on the trail or on the path here right now. Ah, you can see there's still a little bit of snow at the side there. We had a big dump of about two feet of snow 
a while ago and so they put a lot of sand on the roads and they haven't cleared it off yet. And again, that's the great thing about these wider rims and wider tires is uh, they handle that really well. There's a little bit of wet on the road there from the snow melting, a little bit of ice under it, and again, no problems with traction and control. Anyway, again, I'm surprised with this bike, again, to be cruising close to that 32 kilometer an hour cutoff. I've ridden a lot of Bosch bikes, and the funny thing is, is this doesn't feel really much slower or harder to move up the hills or along flat than a much much heavier bike and i can't quite figure it out because i don't imagine that uh you know reason miller and bosch have some sort of trick they do when they put the cx drive on for a cargo bike but it just feels like it's got more torque than it should for the size of the bike which is great you know you definitely don't want to be uh struggling on the hills when you've got a big load. Again, curbs, things like that, no problem, because you may be thinking, well, the control technology doesn't seem that important because I'm not going over a lot of rough terrain, but it's great on any terrain and certainly going on and off curbs, you're not getting that jarring sensation where you feel like you might lose control over the bike. So I've just got an EMTB mode right now, which is uh, kind of that automatic mode. I'm kind of debating with myself, do I leave it there? The advantage is when I have a passenger, especially if my daughter's with me, then I just set it there. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not fiddling with the bike or doing, you know, bike things. So we're probably engaging in a conversation and, you know, I need to pay attention to what's going on around me. So it's just kind of set it and forget it, I don't have to worry about it. If I've got a big hill, I just pedal a little bit harder. It senses, you know, the increased torque I'm putting out and matches that by moving it up to turbo. On the other hand, I don't mind cruising uh, faster. And so if I don't want to really put a lot of extra effort into it, and because it's a heavier bike and I usually have a load with me, I could see, instead of riding on tour, which is, you know, a setting that a lot of people will ride on, it's, it's great for uh, extended battery range and that sort of thing. I could see, instead of having EM2B, having sport, so that I have something that's, uh, you know, a little bit more than uh, tour, but not turbo. So I haven't decided. On my wife's homage, I've changed it over to sport, and she really likes that. I'll have to see. I'll keep it on EMTB for now for the test ride. Okay, so I'm on the Couch and Valley Trail, the Stocking Creek Trail specifically. Hard packed gravel and a bit of snow. Let's ride through the snow. No problem. We'll do some braking uh, tests here. No problem with braking. He's able to stop very easily. Starting out, it's nice to have that assistance. You know, if you've tried a cargo bike without the assistance, it's hard to do the long rides, obviously, because it's just tiring, but it's also hard to get started, especially on a hill. With the uh, Bosch drive, as soon as you put torque on the pedals, as soon as you put pressure on the pedals, it gives you that assistance. So it's not like a bike, you know, with a cadence sensor, which some of the cargo bikes with a hub motor, so I'm always worried about those because they're not they're, I'm not going to say they're unsafe, but they don't have the safety features and approach that you have, say, with the Bosch, with the mid-drive here. So, with a bike with a torque sensor and a, and a rear hub, or a cadence sensor and a rear hub, you actually have to move the pedal. Like, it actually has to move before the assistance starts. But, of course, without the assistance, it's hard to move the pedal. With this bike, with the Bosch, I don't have to move the pedal. I just have to put force on it, and then I get the power, and then I can start going. So to overcome that problem with the bikes with the hub motor, again, not this bike, but bikes with hub motor and the cadence sensor, they'll put a throttle on. Bad idea on a cargo bike. It's just inviting an accident. So then you use a throttle to get going. 
there's no throttle on this bike it's not necessary as soon as you put the force on the pedals you're going to get the assistance you can get going and then you just ride it like a bike you know you don't have to worry about using the throttle or getting too much power it's a nice thing about this emtv mode you know if i'm thinking oh this corner is a little bit tight ease off on my pedaling a little bit it matches that right away immediately so that i don't have a surge of power when i don't expect it oh braking again yeah so i wasn't able to uh didn't actually lock up the brakes i didn't again there despite grabbing them really hard so it's uh yeah the brakes are, are really great got a little bit of snow here and some mud it's surprising actually how well this long wheelbase actually almost seems to handle better in adverse conditions than a regular bike so here's a good cargo bike challenge some snow and ice and bollards in the way of the trail and no problem getting through there i don't recommend this at home if you are going to ride a cargo bike in snow and ice uh, get yourself some studded tires it'll make a big difference probably won't be able to go too much further because we've got this uh, ice on the trail up ahead but just wanted to show you handling wise there's really uh, a lot you can do with this bike and it handles really well so I'm managing to uh, do my signals and braking and cornering Often on a cargo bike, uh, even on the Paxter, which is a great bike, without that control technology, I don't feel comfortable when I have a passenger removing my hands from the handlebars. So for that reason, uh, we have helmets actually that have turn signals built into them, a little remote on the uh, handlebars that are ideal. But uh, again, I don't recommend this, uh, but I feel comfortable, you know, taking a hand off and going down a hill and cornering at the same time because the bike handles so well. This is, this is one of the fun things I like to do. Again, don't do this at home. But you can kind of slalom with the bike. It's just uh, so much fun. It's too bad about the stop sign at the bottom. I was hitting uh, close to 60 there. Felt very safe and secure on the bike. No problems at all. No problem stopping, you know, I don't again you know <laughs> don't do that at home but I know that I'm going to be able to stop if I need to even at those higher speeds so they've really designed the bike to be super safe and super stable and that's so important when you have kids on board you just want to make sure that you feel safe and confident on the ride you know, and this is a good example of sometimes they talk about the control technology and people think, oh yeah, you know, it's just for mountain biking or rough terrain. I'm only on paved roads, those kinds of things. But, you know, the shoulder on this section of the road is not very good. So if I need to get out of the way quickly, you know, maybe an impatient driver behind me or something like that, even though I'm hitting 40, nice to know that if you need to you know get onto that gravel and the potholes and all of that the bike's gonna handle it you're gonna be safe you're not gonna get thrown off the bike and that's where that control technology is just so helpful to have still can't believe this I'm on turbo now you know hitting 27 28 going up this hill it's, uh, more power than I expected I like having the integrated lights. I always run with my lights on in the day, you know, especially on a section of the road like that, where you've got some sharp corners and people may not see you right away this time of day. They are gonna see the light. Of course, my helmet has lights too. All right, and I've accidentally left it on turbo, so maybe I don't wanna put it on sport instead of EMTV, because then I'll have to remember not to leave it on turbo, mind you. 
with the dual batteries, I really could leave it on turbo the whole ride. And well, honestly, I do that when I have uh, my daughter with me or, you know, really heavy load, I'll often just leave it on turbo the whole time. I've got the dual batteries and that way I'm keeping up a little bit in traffic and getting to where I want to go a little bit quicker. Okay, I'm back on this trail. As you can see, there's no snow now. That was an unusual spring. We had lots of snow there, and it's interesting because I actually, this was one of the uh, my favorite bikes for riding in uh, really icy conditions. It actually worked out really well. So we've got, uh, after this uh, first bit of gravel here, then we have some rocks and roots and mud. It'll be a good uh, demonstration of the types of trails that you can actually ride with this with a cargo bike with that full suspension gives you lots of control. In fact, uh, Don, who works in our service department, has a load 60. He uh, actually goes, well, he goes to this friend's mountain biking, believe it or not. And obviously not crazy, crazy stuff, but, um, you know, logging roads and old trails in the bush and up mountains and literally up mountains. Um, and has a dog in the front. The dog comes along. Sometimes it runs, sometimes it rides. It's uh, it's pretty neat to see the dog loves it. So you can see I'm in some real rocks and roots here. And other than the length of the bike, you know, needing to be aware of really tight corners, which obviously this trail doesn't have too many of them, the uh, bike's handling really, really well. Can't see around these corners, so make sure pedestrians know I'm coming. I do take up a little bit more room on the trail than a regular bike. So Don's looking at putting, uh, I mean these are great tires, even in this bit of mud here, it's not deep mud, so they uh, handle really well. Uh, soft gravel works really well, hard packed gravel. Basically all conditions except for really deep mud. So we were looking at uh, experimenting with putting uh, the back, because it's a 26 inch on the back, which is a pretty standard tire size. You know, we used to ride mountain bikes of that size. Um, he's putting a, maybe a Marathon GT365 from Schwalbe, which is kind of their highly puncture resistant mountain bike tire. And it looks like it might clear the fenders, we haven't tried it yet, but it's a neat idea for really deep mud. But for this kind of stuff, um, these tires work really well. No complaints, lots of control, haven't slid or anything at all. The uh, suspension certainly makes it uh, very possible. To ride uh, this kind of trail easily. A little bit of noise from, I think it's the seat belts, you know, the child seats and seat belts in there because they're not done up, but if you did those up, that might help. And I've got some tools and stuff in here as well. So it's really, you know, obviously, if you want a mountain bike, maybe think about getting a mountain bike. But if you're wanting a bike that you can do everything, grocery shopping, getting the kids places, and then just, you know, going on adventures. This isn't, uh, the cargo bike isn't a limitation, right? Like this, this opens up so many possibilities for you. So I'll see uh, if I can find some more trails for you, but uh, I think you've got the idea that this is an incredibly versatile bike. And if you have any questions, you want to try it yourself, uh, you find the current pricing order online, all those things, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. So I've enlisted the help of my daughter to help me uh, demonstrate a ride test with a passenger. She's facing forward now, but it's nice with the load 75 having that uh, wheel well in there. It makes it a lot more comfortable for her legs and she could face towards me as well. Both would be comfortable riding the things. So far I don't really notice a difference in handling with having a passenger with me. Got a bit of a hill here to climb, so we'll see how that impacts on things. Is anybody coming? Alright. Put it up into turbo for the hill. Go past the construction here. 
Oh yeah, no problem on this bit of a hill here. How are those bumps? Good. Yeah, it's nice having the full suspension for both the rider and the passengers. Definitely helps smooth it out. We do have a lot of bumps on the roads here. Some more bumps and uneven pavement. It's nice because if I have traffic behind me, I don't have to try to swerve to avoid the bumps in the road or slow down. That makes me a little bit more predictable and more safe, and that's a really important thing when you do have a passenger with you. Go around the new traffic circle here. Cornering, I'm sure, takes a little bit of getting used to for the passenger. It's gonna lean a little bit when you corner. To get used to it, it's not so bad. With the uh, added weight of having both the rider and the passenger and a relatively heavy bike, you can get some speed up pretty quickly. And it's nice having these very responsive Tektro brakes slow down quite easily.